I haven't quite decided yet what to do with this guy, but uh, let's uh, introduce ourselves to a man named Bo. Bo has got himself a YouTube channel here. It's called Bo of the Fifth Column. And he wants to talk about anti-feminist memes and the patriarchy. And let me give you a clue, MGTOW, man. He's going to call you little boys. Mama well, issues. howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. <laughs> Hi, Bo. So today we're going to talk about anti-feminist memes and the patriarchy. Okay, great. Now we're off to a, a fantastic start. Memes. Let's see. Pictures with words on them. We're going to do this because in that last video I wore that t-shirt with the Disney princesses all tatted up. Wow, that's bold. That's brave, man. And for some reason that made people mad uh, in the uh, shares on Facebook. Why would that make people mad? I, I don't understand, Bo. Could you, could you explain? People loaded up the comment section with, uh, <laughs> with anti-feminist memes. People can still use the internet and, and they can shitpost. Oh my God, the, the, the horror of it all. And we're going to talk about them. Oh, good. I can't wait. They boil down to two types. You yeah. know, you've got the make me a sandwich, do my laundry, clean my house meme. That's meant as a joke, though, because it gets the feminists all so riled. Oh, the oppressive women. <laughs> That's why that one is used. You. And then you have the feminism oh, makes you ugly meme. There's reasons for that. We'll get to it here shortly. Go okay, right guys, ahead. Guys, yeah. if you are so shallow that you're going to marry a woman because she can cook... That would be a nice to have, but I, I, if that's a deal breaker, I agree. That's that's a uh, you can always learn, baby. You know. I would hope that your palate is a little bit more refined than simply needing a BLT. I can make my own sandwiches. Thank you. That's uh, a. Yeah. <laughs> you're setting the bar pretty low. And cooking isn't really making a sandwich. I mean, I would hope that you would need a little bit more uh, uh, skill in that department. Anyone who says because she can't cook. Would be a deal breaker for getting married. Uh, yeah, that's probably uh, kind of shallow. But anyway. Uh, men that could do that, Bo, would be top shelf men. Not average guys. That, that's a beside the point. Youth and beauty. Say it with me. Youth and beauty. We can take cooking classes. As far as cooking, cleaning, doing your laundry, you probably already had a woman in your life that uh, did that for you. Actually, uh, I've done that for myself for most of my life. So, And I, I know it's horrible, the, the oppression of, of putting your clothes in the washing machine and hitting a button. Oh, just how do women do it, man? And that was your mommy. MGTOW men, we have mommy issues. You heard it here from Bo. And that may be the key to understanding this. Yeah, we have, we have mommy issues. We, that's all of us. We're just, our mommies are mean to us and didn't do our laundry or something. Um, yeah. Sure. See, <laughs> yeah. my four-year-old can make his own sandwich. Now, what are you saying here, Bo, when we joke about, when go make me a sandwich? What you're saying is that it's so simple to do a four-year-old child can do it. What, what are you saying about women who get upset if someone jokes with them about making a sandwich? Just saying. It may be that the reason you have a problem with adult women it has nothing to do with feminism and it has to do with the fact that you're still a little boy. Little boy. I'm a little boy. Yeah, yeah. My four-year-old self could make his own sandwich, so. Oh, God. That would be my guess. <laughs> be, that'd be a shitty guess, but uh, it's your channel. But let's go on. Yeah, please. The uh, feminism makes you ugly meme. Now, if you haven't seen one of these, what it what it is, is they find a feminist that they don't find attractive. As time wears, yeah, I mean, we all get older and, and we're not going to, yeah, okay. And sure. then they cyberstalk her. Am I cyberstalking you, you little boy? Are you nervous yet? They go back through and they find her senior portrait from high school. Yeah, usually when people are young and they're full of life and they're not all beaten down by the world, or you know, we're just, there's just, there's a glow. Both men and women have it. It's just a kind of a glow. Probably... The best look in time in uh, a female's life is when she's, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21. Yeah. Which, you know, she looks all wholesome. The photo was taken when she was like 17. Ooh. Those evil mans for preferring youth and beauty. Oh, boy. Go ahead and marinate on that for a second. Their ideal of attractiveness is a teenager 
maybe you're still a little boy. Maybe that's when women are at their peak beauty for some people. Maybe, I mean, everybody has preferences, Bo, right? I mean, yeah, 17 might be crossing the line. 18, certainly. Now, if you were to say someone who's 13, yeah, okay, that's pedophile territory. But we're talking about grown-ass adult women who are graduating high school. There's nothing wrong with that, Bo. Um... And the after photo is, of course, one of her in college, where she's probably put on the freshman 15. That's not the concern, Bo, and you know it, but you're getting there. Like most do. Yeah. Um, maybe she dyed her hair a wild color. Mm, getting closer. Got a piercing, whatever. Or 10 of them and a bunch of sleeve tattoos. So what's the point of the meme? Don't listen to this woman because of how she looks. Um, no, I, I think if, if anybody is saying don't listen to this woman, it might be because she's made some really horrible life choices. Have you considered that? Let's, uh, let's marinate on that for a minute, Bo. Just like I would say to a man, why did you do that to yourself? That's some pretty shitty decision making. It's not a gendered thing. It's why did you do that to yourself thing. The objectification of women, guys, that is not... Uh... That's not an argument against feminism. That's why feminism exists. Define objectifying women. That you have a, an attraction to women if you're a straight guy. That's, that's one of the key issues. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then there's always the added thing of, you know, the caption says something like, don't let this happen to your daughter. That's good advice. But unfortunately, as you're about to say, she's an adult. What can you do, right? See, in that after photo, she's an adult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She is an adult. Yet... She's still property of some other man. What? Where, where the hell did that come from, Bo? What, what are you trying to... What's the picture you're painting here, buddy? Because she's not married yet, right? No, 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 no. She was married. You know, that would be the bitch. Oh, he, she's considered property of the husband. But no, she's still property of the father? She's, so she still belongs to her dad? Apparently, if she turned out like that, maybe daddy um, wasn't around. <laughs> Just saying, you know. Still need that parental figure. Well, yeah, we all do. I still love my father. He's 80-some years old. I mean, they're, they're good to have around for advice and other things. Maybe you're a little boy. Maybe I'm not a little boy. Maybe not. Then it goes on. There are other uh, comments about male feminists and how they're all soft. Hmm. And they are soy boys. I think that is a stereotype. Yeah. I don't think that's necessarily true in all cases. Uh, but uh, I think there's probably enough of these soy boys, as you say, who are just feminists to try to get into some pussy. There's um, probably a few of those. Yeah. Okay. Because masculine men don't need to do that to get pussy. Uh, do you get it, uh, Bo? Um, um, mm. Where's your Medal of Honor at, Mr. Meme Maker? What the fuck are you talking about, dude? I mean, I can get with you on, on some of what you're saying here, but then where's your Medal of Honor at? It's a meme. A lot of times it's a joke. You know? Ha ha. Funny. You don't get that. Teddy Roosevelt is pretty much the pinnacle of American masculinity. Yeah, he was a tough dude. Somebody shot him and he still gave a speech. <laughs> Go right ahead. Medal of Honor recipient, Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah. You know, I did a whole video on him. I will put it in the uh, comment section. He wrote some good books, too. You might want to read those. They're pretty good stuff. He's also yeah. a founding feminist. I'll have to do some research. Why? Because he was in the Bull Moose Party. Or something. masculine men. Masculine men don't need to cater to women. They're going to get pussy no matter what. They're not afraid of independent women. They don't care because they have pussy on tap, Bo. Come on, let's, let's just be man to man here. You know what I'm saying is true. Because they're not a little boy. A little boy. Oh now, another argument against it is, <laughs> you know, uh, against feminism is that feminism is no longer needed because the patriarchy is dead. I don't think there's, there, there will always be a hierarchy, I believe. Even in the socialist systems that I'm sure you love, Bo, there's always a hierarchy. Now, you could call it a patriarchy, you call it a matriarchy, some, there's always going to be someone at the top, okay? So if you're referring to that sort of system as a patriarchy, okay, it's not dead, definitely. And yeah, one definition of patriarchy is a society in which a male ruler inherits his title from his dad. And that's not our system, but thanks for mentioning that. That is one definition of patriarchy. You yeah, are that happened a long time ago, back in the Middle Ages. Correct. Yeah. Another is a society in which men wield most of the power and women are typically excluded to a degree. 
Isn't that interesting? You know, Bo, women are the majority of voters in the United States. Odd that they keep electing men, I guess. That's the patriarchy. Yeah. Name the last female president. We haven't had one. So, stupid question, but go ahead. No. Nope. Vice president. Geraldine Ferraro, 1984, ran with Walter Mondale. Reagan beat him in 49 states. But I'm sure that was because people hated women, right? No. <laughs> yeah. There are 23 female U.S. senators, mm -hmm. and that, I think, is a record. I think that's as high as it's ever been. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's a record. You know, what's amazing is that 75% of nurses are women. What are we going to do about that? Um, yeah. How many would they need for equal representation in our representative democracy? 95% of garbage collectors are men. What are we going to do about that? 50 twice as many. I was going to say, it doesn't depend on your policy, but it does. You, you need to have a vagina and you need to be a socialist. You see, we could put 51% of women in Congress who are Republican. You wouldn't like that, would you? House of Representatives has 87 female representatives, I believe. Um, for there to be equal representation there, they would need to be 217. Yeah. Closing in on three times as many. Wow. What about governors? There's about six. Yeah. Six. How many would there need to be? 25. Four times as many. There are 14 lieutenant governors that are female. Just thought I'd throw that out. When you get to mayors, state legislators, state senators, stuff like that, the averages hover around 20 to 25 percent. I'll take your word for it, Bo. Certainly seems like men wield most of the power. And women vote for them, Bo. Women are, are the majority of voters in the United States. And so it seems to me that if we want to have a woman president or a woman governor or a woman editor, whatever, women could all band together and vote for the female. Is it possible, Bo, in your mind that maybe some women aren't feminists and they vote for the best person for the job, not just because they have a vagina? Has it even occurred to you? Yeah. Identity anyway. politics 101 here, people. So patriarchy does still exist. Now, yeah. it's a loaded term, and it's a term a lot of people don't understand, but it, it, it is still there. And what happens is there's the rebuttal. Oh, no, 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 Bo. That, that's not why it's happening. It's because they're not qualified. 51% of the voting population is female, Bo. They're not qualified. I don't think I've ever heard anybody actually say that. There's probably some people that would say, well, them women's, they only deserve to be in the kitchen making sandwiches and babies. But I don't know who these people are, Bo. I really don't. And that's what they say. What I hear is that those disparities exist in the private sector as well when it comes to job promotion and stuff like that. That's yeah, that's probably true. That's probably true. Because women... And men are driven by different things. There are plenty of qualified women, career women. They want to do what they want to do, and they want to rise up the ranks and get into Wall Street. And some don't, Bo. Hard to believe, mama's boy, but women are actually individuals. I know, it's That's crazy. That's what I hear. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Bo. They don't get promoted because they don't work as hard or as long, and they take more days off. Is that true or not? Could it be possible that's part of it? Not all of it. Part of it? Is it possible? Is it possible there's still sexism rampant in, in workplaces? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's the majority of it either. I think there's a combination. However, feminists only look at one of the possible reasons. The patriarchy. <laughs> do, you, do you hear me now? And that's what they say. And what I hear is that women have been conditioned to put their husband's career first, or stay home with the kids. If they choose to stay home with the kids, isn't that their choice, Bo? And if they do choose to stay at home with the kids, wouldn't they want to make sure that their husband, you know, is uh, making money? Just, yeah. um, now, th this isn't to say that I agree with every tactic that radical feminists use. Good. <laughs> you had me worried there for a minute. But they never asked me. And they won't because you're a man. Do you understand that? <laughs> I believe in diversity of tactics, so, I mean... They don't care what you believe in. Whatever. They're drawing attention to a cause that still needs some attention. How so? Oh, I know. Because 50% of everything isn't... Okay, what about those garbage men? 
hey, Bo, what about the fishermen? What about the guys cleaning sewers? Are we going to try to get those as well to be 50% of women? <laughs> At the end of the day, guys... No. All women have to be two things, and that's it. Yeah. Who and what they want. What you think doesn't matter. Just got done saying that, Bo. What you think doesn't matter. The fact that you don't find her attractive doesn't matter. It does to her, in some cases. The fact that she intimidates you because she is more educated, or because she makes more money, or because whatever, doesn't matter. The amount of time you spend in a classroom doesn't mean you're more educated. A master's degree in gender studies is not worth an associate's degree in electronics technology, Bo, and you fucking know it. That's your hang-up. That's your problem. Not hers. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, just a thought. Y'all have, uh, have a good day. I'll put the link below. See what you think of this guy. James Maxwell, thank you for listening. And don't cyber-stalk him, you little boys.